Hi again, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Get On With the Urquan Masters. Last episode, we uh, actually bothered to fix the broken Ultron and give it to the Ludwig, whom I may have called the Umga mistakenly once. I don't know, I don't remember. But if I did, I apologize. I was obviously erroneous. Thus, uh, causing the Utwig and the Supox to enter into alliance with us, and furthermore, attack the Kora there, um, by, um, extending the amount of time we have to win. Now, I've gotten a few questions before about why the Kazurza Urquan are not using their combat thralls, the battle thralls, the folks they've enslaved, to help them in this fight. And the reason for that is that would go completely against the doctrinal conflict. The, um, all other races are either fit for slavery or destruction. They cannot possibly hope to be equal with the Urquan. Eventually, as far as I'm aware, the, the green Urquan, the Gazerza, go about encasing everyone in a slave shield anyway. I mean, in their spin throughout the galaxy, surely they would not have just left unslaved worlds, right? They would have re-enslaved everyone. Surely they wouldn't have allowed people to roam free and develop on their own. Otherwise, wouldn't we see them in this galaxy? I don't know. Regardless, they, you know, they shouldn't be doing that. It would be an unfair advantage, and it wouldn't be. It would be completely against everything the Urquan stand for, which is their supremacy over everything else. To allow other races into that doctrinal conflict would sully it. Indeed, that's why they wanted me out. I mean, granted, I was supposed to be a fallow slave and placed in a human slave shield, but still, they didn't want me to sabotage it. You know, the uh, the Kazurza even warned us earlier that uh, interference may cause the Kazurza to lose, and you do not want the Kazurza to lose. Because the Kora would be victorious and go about murdering everyone. Okay, now that we had that little chat, let us leave, and I shall save the game. This will be video for 37, so we'll put it in this slot. And off we go. Now, it's been a long time since we ventured into Ilroth space. We're going to go do that now, okay? Okay. I, um, I think there's a wormhole I can take. That would get me closer in there. There, um... Mm, excuse me. Had some milk between the uh, videos. Where is their... Home world? That's the Jinjesu home world. These are all planets in the Buddhist constellation. Which are not quite what I'm looking for. Olber, is it down here? Well, no. It's gotta be, right? I'm just missing it, right? Huh. Hmm. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong area. Maybe it's uh, above? Could be. Must be. Okay, here we go. Alpha Tari. Oh, fiddlesticks. It's above their ill raw sphere of influence. Interesting. But who am I to judge? Uh, I'll just fly there for old times' sakes. I don't know whether the. I don't remember exactly where the portal in ill raw space would take me. So. Let's not do that. I mean, it would take me somewhere in Ilra space, but I don't think that would put me that much closer, if closer at all, to the Ilroth homeworld. I think this is the Ilroth homeworld. I don't know. I'm not 100% certain. If I'm wrong, then we can spend this video looking for it. With great joy in our hearts. Joy. Ah. Uh. We get to jam along with the music, folks. Yay, jamming! Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we're still... G are we gonna still be in space? 
whenever it turns January 1st? I think so. I think so. Are you ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Aww. We have been delayed. Now, you can go visit the Ilroth homeworld and chat with them, but that inevitably results in fights which you cannot win as you are facing an unlimited amount of ships. However, if we say go to ye old devices and activate the Unga caster, listen! It is the hideous and inspiring voices of our gods, Dogar and Kazan. Oh, great gods of evil and darkness, what can your humble and devious servants do for you? Yes. <laughs> By using the Umga caster, you too can impersonate the dark gods Dogar and Kazan, thus manipulating the Ilroth to do your bidding. Worship us! From the chambers of pain, we know we hear your words, cruel and evil lords of darkness. And as your voice crackles out of the speaker boxes, it sends thrills across our carpuses. Our hairy quills all stand erect, and we pant and wheeze with holy fever. Oh, mighty gods. You are the definition of all that is evil and hideous in this universe. You are the inspiration for all cruelty, deception, and pain. For this, we thank you. We require that you do things a bit differently. Your will is our inspiration. What shall we do? From this day forward, say worship. <laughs> I forgot how awesome this is. <laughs> From this day forward, no, I gotta say this in an epic voice. Hold on. From this, from I gotta say this in an evil voice too. From this day. From this day. Attention. No. From this day forward, say worship instead of worship. As you wish, glorious, unmerciful destructors. In all future worship, we will honor you in this way. From this day forward, say twee instead of we. Yes, great Dogar. Yes, mighty Kazon. Do we certainly will? Do we certainly will? From this day forward, say you boo instead of you. It shall be so, great ones. You boo are mighty. You boo are the most hideous and deceitful. We Ilrath are too fortunate to have you boo to worship. I said worship, not worship, dammit. Right, you are no longer the Ilrath. You are now the Dill Rats. We the Dill Rats bow and scrape off our appendages in your honor, mighty Dogar and Kazan. You are sufficiently graced. Go and kill gruesomely in our names. We can never receive sufficient direction from you, great masters. We eagerly await your next vile commandments. Here's what we're really here to do, though. Heed these words, our evil children. Leave this place. Seek new prey. Oh, mighty Dogar. Oh, mighty Kazan. Your devoted servants hear your words and obey your divine and cruel insights. The Pakunk are unfit for our sacramental tortures. 
We relish the prospect of killing worthy prey. We will leave immediately so that we can begin our glorious evil devotions. But who shall we prey upon next? Who shall suffer our inspired torment? Hmm. Didn't those loathsome Umga once mention a race near their region of space? Hmm. Yes, I have it. The Fredash. We will go now and kill all of them. <laughs> we return now to the fetid darkness. Obey our commands. Kill the rats. Farewell, Dogar and Kazan. We are awed by your malevolent presence and swear unto you to commit even more violent, treacherous deeds tomorrow than we did today. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. So yes, our good old friends, uh, the Ilrath. That is the other way you deal with the um, Fredash. Uh, pit the Ilrath against them; they pretty much burn out. They both burn out each other. There you go. That's the fun you can have with the Umga caster. Although I think you can do that with the Birthday Seas caster as well. You just need a caster. So, with that out of the way, let us leave. And we shall now head over towards Procyon. Oh, and... Happy New Year! <laughs> I'm gonna stop doing that now. It is good. Dogar and Kazan, the twin gods. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Seriously though. Let's take a break. Hyperspace remix, yeah. DJ Grimgram's up in this bitch. What up? <laughs> Too much fun with Grimoth. You'll see the Ilra Sphere is slowly beginning to relocate. Sopox and the Utwig will eventually retreat after they've expended themselves. It'll be okay. Now, let us save ye old game again. And... Fly me to the moon. <laughs> having way too much fun. Now, we arrive here their planet once more. Now, I do believe we were given hints about this, but uh, casters have the capability sometimes of uh, penetrating, you know, what I'm trying to say is that the caster can penetrate a slave shield. If you have something sensitive enough to pick up the reception and respond, what I'm again trying to say is that you can communicate with the Jinjesu and the Murmur through this method. So, let us do that. We are the Chenjesu. We are the Mernhelm. We do not understand how you have penetrated the slave shield or why, but in doing so you have interrupted the process. Explain this intrusion. We are struggling against the Urquan. Can't you help us? We cannot be of any assistance now. We are in the middle of the process. I will explain. After we, Chen Jesu, and Mernhelm were defeated by the Urquan, we chose to be encased in a single slave shield on this world. As soon as the Urquan departed, we began the process. We initiated a synthesis of our two species our two cultures, one crystalline, the other purely mechanical. This process, fueled only by the radiant energy of our sun, will eventually produce a new hybrid race. And when the process is complete, we will crack the Urquan slave shield and emerge from our chrysalis like a winged insect unleashed from its cocoon. Then we will be ready and capable to deal with the Urquan, their battle thralls, and their dreaded Samatra. 
It's important to note that the Tenjesu were the most powerful members of the、uh, the Alliance of Free Stars、um, with, during the、uh, the Urquan Slave War, which occurred in Star Control One, and、uh, the Urquan most definitely noticed this and、uh, made great pains to、uh, clobber the Tenjesu after they had been greatly weakened. Um, but notice that the Jinjesu and the Murhar, you know, they 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 had an ace up their sleeve. They developed a cunning plan to both be encased upon the, the same world and、um, form a hybrid of themselves, which apparently is going to be capable enough of dealing with everyone, including the, their dreaded Samatra. Their dreaded Samatra. Oh boy. But why can't you help us now? The complete synthetic hybridization of the Chen Jesu and the Murnhorn species will require approximately 35 of your Earth years. This extended duration is necessary because our synthesis mechanisms are dependent exclusively on the light of our sun for energy. Oh boy. Yeah, thirty-five Earth years is a long time, especially with the core on the galaxy about to murder everyone. What if we could find some way to get you more energy? Will that speed things up? What you describe is theoretically possible, but it would pose a great danger to us. The process must be executed as planned, or it may fail catastrophically. We would be destroyed. We came here to find out what you're doing down there. Though your ship's design is unfamiliar to us, we now understand that you are of human origin, and so we will share with you our reasons for accepting the status of Urquan slave. In 2135, our great alliance burned within the crucible of sentience. Though our fleets of armed starships held back the hierarchy's grotesque armada for many years, in the end, the Urquan unleashed a power upon us that was so overwhelming we knew we would be annihilated if we did not submit. This unstoppable power, this ultimate weapon, was a huge starship, an unstoppable battle platform built by the precursors in the ancient past. Your vessel shares some similarities in design to the Urquan's battle platform, which they call Samatra, meaning great trophy. The Samatra was many times larger than your ship, and bore weapons and defensive systems that made it invulnerable to all of our technologies. It remains a mystery to us why the Urquan fought us for so long without using the Samatra. But when they finally brought the ship into combat, the Samatra incinerated our finest brood home vessels from ten times our own ship's weapon range. We had no choices beyond submission or devastation. Before the Urquan arrived to accept our surrender, we sent one last message to your people. A message suggesting that your species do as we Chenjesu and Murnherm plan to do. We would accept the Urquan's demands and become slaves until such a time as we found a way to destroy or neutralize the Samatra. That's a big fucking deal, folks. Commander Hayes、uh, noted、um, how everything seemed to be going. Just well enough. The Jinjetsu, the Murher, everybody combined were holding back the onslaught of hierarchy weapons until that ultimate invulnerable weapon of untold power completely devastated everything. Apparently, the Starlux shares a、uh, design, some design elements similar with this, and from. We really need advice from you. Our wisdom is available. Each 
detail your need. How do you think we can defeat the Urquan? You must find some way to destroy the Sumatra. To do this, you will need a powerful weapon capable of destroying an entire planet. But that is not all. You will also require some way to distract the Urquan to give you the opportunity to use the weapon. We know the Dinyari only from legend, where they are described as the embodiment of evil and cruelty. If ever there was a devil, Captain, it was the Dinyari. However, if in fact the creature you possess is one of this ancient breed, its mental power may be useful to help confuse the Urquan. The device you speak of is a huge matter, antimatter bomb. If you had activated it, the weapon would have annihilated your ship and everything else within 500 kilometers. The destructive power of this weapon makes it suitable for the most important task you will ever undertake. The neutralization of the Sumatra, the Urquan's nearly invincible battle platform. We do not recognize this device, but it appears to be a precursor tool which can radiate a great amount of energy. They're quite intelligent, if you haven't noticed. Though your presence here is a painful intrusion, we will always provide advice whenever you request it, Captain. Goodbye, goodbye, Jinjesu. Goodbye. Uh -huh. Goodbye, once and future ally, human. When the process is complete, and we emerge from our chrysalis, I shall tell your grandchildren of our conversation this day. How thoughtful of you. So yes, if you guys haven't gotten the note, there's pretty much uh, the final pieces that, well, not every single final piece. What you need to know, the Sumatra is your boss. The final boss. In order to defeat the Urquan hierarchy, you must destroy the battle platform. That's it. That is the only... Because no matter how many Urquan hierarchy ships the Alliance of Free Stars devastated throughout the entirety of Star Control 1, um, as soon as that platform was unleashed, game over. In order to have any hope of defeating them, that has to be done. And by the way, uh, the reason why the Urquan did not utilize that was because it would have been seen as a waste of a great trophy. That great trophy is symbolic of the doctrinal conflict, and to utilize it on mere beings unworthy of life or existing? Oh, that would have been most unfortuitous indeed. But we can't just let the Jinjesu and the um, chillax down there under the slave shield. We need their help, and we need it now. Consequently, we must interfere with their um, their hybridization process. Um, it kept, you know, catastrophic failure could occur. They could die, you know, from what they say, but it has to be done. Otherwise, they'll die anyway. Right? For what it's worth, I'm sorry. We are free. You have flooded our synthesis mechanisms with a wealth of radiant energy. What was supposed to take decades has been accomplished in seconds. The process is incomplete, yet we have emerged. We are the truer. Why have you interrupted the process? Man. He is... They are pissed. I guess I can't blame them. That may have caused an immense amount of pain. We struggle to free all races from the Urquan. We need your help, Chamur. 
Your need must be great for you to have risked so much just to bring us from beneath the shield. We were not ready, but this is now in the past. What is done is done. You are intent on stopping the Urquan. Very well. We are prepared to assist you in whatever way we can. We must first tell you that even before we were placed under the Slave Shield, we realized that the only way to truly defeat the Urquan was to first destroy their precursor battle platform, the Samatra. This vessel was responsible for the victory of the hierarchy over the Alliance. When it was brought to bear against our worlds, we could not resist it. This must be your priority. This must be your eventual goal. We know what is necessary to achieve this end. But first, we must know what you have already learned. So we will scan the data banks and logs aboard your ship. There. The process is complete. Now we can discuss what you must do. You need to locate the Urquan's Sabatra vessel. If you cannot find it yourself, ask those others who are near the Urquan. Perhaps they will know. We have detected the presence of a Dnyari aboard your ship. Though the being is darkly evil and incredibly dangerous, the Talo device you possess has effectively nullified the creature's power over you. However, it will do a most excellent job distracting the Urquan long enough for you to approach the Sumatra and destroy it. You possess an antimatter bomb. This is good. But had you activated it, the device would have annihilated your ship and everything else within 500 kilometers. Even so, we will have to improve this device, magnify its power with our crystal technology. The destructive potential of this weapon will then make it suitable for the most important task you will ever undertake, the neutralization of the Sumatra, the Urquan's nearly invincible battle platform. You are fully prepared for the undertaking. There is every chance that you will be able to destroy the Sumatra and stop both the Urquan and the Quora. So what happens now? We will now fit the precursor weapon and our own crystal amplification system to your vessel by routing a portion of your flagship's fusion power through the weapon's ignition chamber. Its destructive force will be multiplied by a large factor. <laughs> we'll fire this weapon at the Sumatra, right? It's not gonna hurt my ship, is it? Joke. Your vessel will be totally annihilated. Damn it! <laughs> Whoa, gee, that's bad. I don't suppose there's anything we can do to change that, is there? No. <laughs> no. No. It's so painful listening to... Oh, man. Good thing they're such good people. Uh, I, it's hard for me to... I guess we technically have to recognize them as one. They synthesized them the one. Two became one. So it's one. Still, it is definitely still in pain. And probably somewhere in there, pissed that we interrupted the process. Can you provide us with any other assistance? Because your flagship will be substantially weakened by our modifications. You may require additional combat vehicles for protection so that you can approach close enough to the Samatra to detonate the weapon. 
we will provide you with the designs for our new Avatar class fighting ships. In competent hands, these ships are a match for both the Urquan and Core R vessels. They designed those things pretty quickly, didn't they? Also, yeah. What was that called? We will provide you Avatar? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a shame that this the ship comes so late. Oh yeah. They they promised it would be a match for both the Urkohan and Kora vessels. Not joking. The completion date for your vessel's modification is roughly two weeks hence. So that you and your human companions may make any necessary preparations at your starbase, we will now transport you and your crew back to Earth immediately. Good luck, Captain. I am at your disposal, Captain. I've been waiting to inform you of a new situation. We have made a formal alliance with the Shimmer. Their ships can now be built in our shipyards. Also, in the two weeks that have passed since the Shimmer began to work on your vessel, they attached the Utwig bomb to your ship and have also put in place their own crystalline amplification devices to boost dramatically the power of the weapon. This work is now complete and your flagship is ready for whatever final modifications you desire. The Shamur technicians wanted me to explain to you that the bomb and its crystal power boosters are fragile and cannot be moved from their positions at the back of your vehicle. Now I have some bad news and some good news. The Shamur had to remove all your main modules, weapons, crew pods, and the whole lot including your emergency warp escape unit, so pick your engagements carefully, Captain. In addition, their equipment now fills the rear ten slots leaving you only six for your own modules. But here's the good news. The Shamira have provided us with an unbelievable wealth of minerals and other resources. We no longer have limits on what we can build for your flagship or your fleet. Yes, entering into the lines of the Shamir, or Shamir as the Starbase Commander refers to him, um, removes your need for resource units. Unlimited are you. That's what it says, so if you've been working a, a long time to mine all those minerals and sell all that fuel that you bought from the Mel Norme, yep, don't need to do it anymore. Very helpful though, considering that, um, you need all the power at your disposal to do what you're going to do. Goodbye, Commander. We're all depending on you. Goodbye, and good luck. <laughs> Did he, like, like, what was that, a snark? Goodbye, and good luck. So, yes, we no longer have room for landers. We've lost our emergency escape unit. However, we've gotten an escape pod in exchange. Which means that after we direct our flagship towards the battle platform, we can escape so we don't die in the explosion. How generous. You'll also notice that as was noted, we don't have that much room in the vessel anymore because it has been taken up by the bomb and the crystalline power enhancers. So we only have a total of six modules left on the ship. Unfortunate, I know. We're gonna need a crew pod. They can, they can base up right there. And we're gonna need at least one high efficient fuel system. We should probably take in two crew pods. Two high efficient fuel systems. I should probably give this thing a gun. I should probably spend some time thinking about what I'm gonna do. We'll do that. And the shipyard. The Avatar. The most expensive ship on this list. And with good reason. Stocking 42 crew. It is a beast. As for what future things I will buy, I will have to consider this. 
this is the final video of this session, folks. Make no mistake, it is the final video. Go ahead and save there, and a backup right there. But... <sighs> the Ulroth are continuing their move up two weeks, and they've only gone that far. And we don't see a, a sphere of influence for the Jemur, but... Alas. Okay. Supots and the Utwig are still, uh, fighting the Kora. The Thradash ever treated to lick their wounds. Little do they know that the Ilroth are on their way to crush them. That is in direct violation of the Urquan various oaths, by the way. You know, no battle thrall is supposed to attack another, but that's definitely gonna happen. <sighs> what awaits us the next time we play? final battle. See you then.